Hello. I'm going to put this video together basically just to show people um, my setup and my shack, my radio shack. It's quite a minimalistic shack. Uh, looks more like a gamer's <laughs> desk setup, I suppose. But there is quite a fair bit of radio equipment um, hidden away. Some's on show. Uh, show you the radio, show you the antennas and the software that we use and how everything integrates. Um, could be interesting. It might not be interesting, but I thought I'll give you all a little insight into what I'm doing, how I'm using it, what I'm using. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, so we'll start off with this headset here. This is the Behringer DT... Um, DT990 Pros. Uh, these are the 250 ohm versions. I brought these because I, I'm very much into music. Uh, example, a guitar just up there. We've got many guitars uh, around the room. I brought this because I'm into music and they're a very good like audio file headset. Uh, brilliant piece of equipment. You do need something to drive them there. You can't just plug them in straight into like a, uh, the standard soundboard, uh, sound card on a computer because these are the 250 ohm versions. You can get them in lower down to, I think, like something like 32 ohms or something. Um, but brilliant, brilliant, brilliant headset. Absolutely love them. So we'll move across the deck. You'll have to bear with me because I'm using uh, my gimbal that I've not used in a very long time. Um, so the main main radio, or the main piece, I suppose, is uh, the ASU FT710. Uh, absolutely love this radio. There's been a, a couple of teething problems. Oh, don't know what happened there. There's been a couple of teething problems with these radios. Um, Obviously, with them being brand new, firmware updates and uh, and playing around, uh, trying to get some fixes, the DNR levels and stuff. But it's an absolutely brilliant radio, nice and small. You can get a, it comes with a speaker that can hook on either side. Not currently using it because I use what I'll show you in a second what I use. But a brilliant little compact radio, uh, HF6, and I think you well you can a few button presses get it on four meters as well. So a uh, lovely little radio to sit on the desk. Uh, nothing really interesting as such, but the Logitech MX Master, I think, keys and mouse that I use. This is a fun piece of equipment. I use um, a little Behringer MIDI controller here, and uh, I'll show you uh, with software later on in the video of what all of that does. But it basically gives me uh, like a, a physical input to adjust all my software, uh, adjust all my audio, sorry, where I want to route it. See, so headphones and speakers for every single option. Um, a full reset so if you hit that button um, it will fully refresh all the audio so you've got any issues or anything like that would do it uh, independent volumes for each channel um, of, so I'll show you later on where I've got that all rooted uh, just a pair of the brand I believe yeah creative uh, these are just little desk speakers brought them because I don't always want to use the headset um, you know it's sometimes oh, we're going the wrong way <laughs> it's sometimes nice to be able to just Sit there without your headphones on uh, if you're right channel, just listening to bits and bobs on the radio or watching YouTube videos. Just nice to have a pair of speakers. Uh, over here is the Icom IC2730, I think it is. The E, I think it's just European, they do the A for the American market. Lovely 2 meters, 70 centimeter radio. The main unit of that is hidden away down the side of the desk. Um, 50 watts, 15 watts, and 5 watts, both on UHF and VHF. Uh, got it all programmed up with um, a few air, just airband and whatnot, PMR, so I can listen on there as well. But mainly all the repeaters, um, and we've got obviously two meters there. Some weird reason I've got some noise at the minute, which I haven't been having at all. That's strange. Uh, over here it doesn't usually sit there. Here's my laptop just for taking around, um, and then there's a cheap pair, cheap headset over there actually that I've been testing at the minute, just when I don't want to have to have the mic over here. Um, it's nice to be able to use a headset sometimes. So what we we'll do is I'll just skip ahead a little bit to show you the microphone because I'll pull it out and uh, and I'll show you that. So we'll jump back in with the microphone. Right. Okay. So this is the microphone. I think it is a Behringer. I think I got it on a deal on Amazon. Uh, let me just lower the volume of that. Sorry. <laughs> I think I got it on a deal on Amazon. Uh, I'm sure it's a Behringer microphone. I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, it had fairly good reviews. People say it's a little bit on the low end, a little bit on the bassy end, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway, have a try and uh, just see see what it's all about. And with a bit of EQ, um, it's it's managed to work very well. Um, now I'm, I'll show you my EQ in a bit. I'm not an absolute magician on equalizers and stuff, but I literally remoted into an SDR, hack green SDR, connected to that, and I just played around until it sounded nice to my ears. So uh, don't don't quote me on that one. Uh, and then up the top here is my Canon 60D. 
um, that I use for recording videos, my webcam and live streaming. Uh, the latest edition, I've just received this today actually, so I can't comment too much on it. It's a little light, just to light up the area a little bit when we're at night. So that is the main desk cell. There's three, if I come to the side here, ignore the old holes at the back of the desk because <laughs> um, a little speaker hidden away for the icon there as well. Uh, curved monitors um, and yeah, absolute brilliant screen real estate sometimes too much for my eyes um but i really do enjoy it and it just makes the experience being sat in the chair here uh brilliant the pc just sits down there got of extra bits a little subwoofer just down the bottom there a little homebrew foot switch that i made out of some uh, door wedges just put a couple of switches wired them all in so whichever one you hit transmits the radio uh if you don't like using fox but yeah that, that's the main desk cell that's what's on the desk i think what we'll do now is we'll jump in and show you the antennas outside um and then we'll come back and look at some software so uh, we'll meet you outside with the antennas and here we are the antennas so we'll start off with the main twos and seventies antenna there's the uh, diamond x300n with i think lmr 400 coax i believe uh, like i said that's the main the two meters and the 70 centimeters that's transmit receive antenna that goes into the icon and then just up there, we'll try and zoom in a bit. Uh, I'm still learning how we use this. Up there is just a little X30 sort of chimney, which just sits comfortably plugged into a, an SDR uh, for scanning and receiving. It still does a pretty good, pretty good job. It's all nice and high. And it works a treat. So what we're doing now is we go to the bottom of the garden. We'll show you the um, HF antenna. Okay, so trying to block out the sun as it literally is just there, and it will blow out my shot. That is the one of the poles holding up the N-fed half wave antenna. Now, um, if can we zoom in on this? Yeah, we can. There's a 49 to 1 balloon up there with 20 meters of wire, which runs off to my neighbor's garden, so thankfully that's me using the garden. Um, I do need to straighten the pole. It is secure. It's just bending a little bit. <laughs> so I will fix that, but I think the wind... Um, no, it wasn't the wind, sorry. I actually changed the end of the antenna over my neighbor's garden, um, and it just pulled the pole a little bit tighter, but it is still very secure. It's been up through lots of wind, so works a treat so they're the main antennas that we're using out of hf uh, i did have a ds command drop and what we'll do is we'll just jump down to the bottom of the garden i'll show you where the radial is finished for that it's down for the time being so i think i'm going to use it for some portable stuff so we'll go and have a quick look at that okay so down here is where the ds commander was my dog is now getting in the way come out the way miles <laughs> so you can see the radials are all buried um here's all the bunches of radials and a little ground rod which was just a temperamental test so ignore that it's not very good but i really just like to get in the shot here <laughs> uh, but yep yeah, these are all the ends of the radials and there is i can't remember how many radials i think there's seven bunches of three and then i ran an extra seven which are five meters long to get me on 80 meters but like i said that's not currently used at the minute but the radials are there ready for it to be used so we'll jump back upstairs and have a look at some software Okay, so a little bit of a walk through the software. I have done a video of this over on my TikTok, but I'll add it into this video as well. So we'll start off down here on the bottom right. This is a uh, software called Bandicam. And if I just pull it up on the screen for you there, um, basically what it is, piece of software that allows you to record the screen, record from a capture device, whatever you want to do. Uh, so I have a, just a cheap, cheerful USB HDMI capture card plugged into my uh, one of the USB ports on my PC and what that allows me to do is plug the display port um, output of my radio uh, into this capture card and yeah it, it just allows me to to pump the, the the display instead of me plugging my radio into an external monitor I can plug it into this capture card and I can see it on my screen uh, it's not necessarily needed I can see the screen as a radio is on my desk but when I do videos like this or a stream it's it's, it's nice to have so that's bandy cam and uh, that, that's what that is at the bottom right there uh, on your left here this is win for yesu which I assume a lot of people will be f quite familiar with Similar to Ham Radio Deluxe in that respect, I suppose. Uh, they do a win for ICOM, obviously for ICOM radios too, but it's basically just a, a full-blown um, control of the of the radio that's plugged in, in this case my FT710. It allows you to do things like changing all the bands and you know setting up your split frequencies, A and B, adjusting your atten attenuation, your amps, and anything you want to do, basically. I think you can even fire, or no, is it tools? Yeah, radio menu items, so you can load up all the tools you need to load up. Um, oh, a repeater's going off in the background. Um, so, brilliant piece of software. It just means you don't have to touch the radio. Everything could be on here, you can see all your signal meters. Uh, up at the top on here, 
Um, let me just get that open for you. Up at the top here is my login software. So another very popular software is uh, log for om which is what I'm using. So I'll just put that into full screen so you can see it well. So obviously your normal stuff, entering call signs, and you can add comments and, and whatnot. A uh, cool thing is with this has the little map integration. So what I would do is just show you a few of the features. I will um, M7NQL, that's my friend Josh, uh, not too far away from it at all. So you can see straight away it says data lookup, and it shows you the name up here, uh, which I really like. You can greet people with the name on the air. Uh, it's just a nice piece of software. And if their locator is set correctly, or I think it's there or thereabouts, um, that's not where Josh lives. He lives a lot closer to me than that, which is more into Derby. Um, but it, it just gives you a much better understanding as to where they are. Uh, if you click the info tab, it'll bring up the info from uh, QRZ, so Derbyshire. Uh, recent QSOs, obviously, through there. Your cluster, you can set your cluster or propagation. Another cool software, you can, you know, you can run a, a propagation reporter. So it can show you roughly um, where it is. So if you click generate, I'll leave that to do that thing and then we'll come back to it. Worked before. Uh, there you go. Look, so I've typed in Josh's call sign. It's brought up every single contact that we've had. So if you leave it on that screen and you hear a call sign, you can punch it in and you know if you've worked before. Propagation is loaded. There you go. So you can generate a little map showing you where the, roughly where propagation is. Uh, I don't know how accurate it is, but it's... Um, it's a fun tool to use and what we'll do now is talk a little bit about my audio so over here this is a voice meter um, some people might be familiar some people might not be uh, it's basically just an audio routing software it, it generates these three external uh, three internal new virtual uh, audio outputs if you like and on that you can run anything you want so as it stands i've got my microphone set in the middle one uh, and you've got all these different devices. So to cut a long story short, A3 is selected for my radio. So if I click A3 on that, what it would do is it would take any of the audio that's on this channel and it will pump it down the output of A3, which I happen to have selected as my uh, my radio. So it pumps my microphone, which is connected to my computer, into the radio via its cat cable and using its internal um sound card and then from there i run all of these so how i showed you earlier on the desk yeah the midi controller for more all my audio well this sort of lines up with these so there's one two three four five six seven eight 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 inputs outputs uh three around the rest of ins um it correlates to the to the midi control that sat on my desk uh, so i can adjust absolutely everything there uh, and that is all of my um all of my audio. So I think that's a, that's mainly all I needed to show you. Uh, I really appreciate people watching. Um, I'm trying to push some more on YouTube, some more live streams and uh, some more TikTok videos. So if anyone wants me to go a bit more in depth about things or if you, you want to see some more different things or have any suggestions, I'm, uh, I'm you know, I'm sort of brainstorming on what I can do. Uh, I've got a few ideas in the pipeline. So uh, this has just been a little bit of fun, I suppose. Showing people around the the, the setup, uh, the antennas, and the actual software side of the uh, of how I've got everything running and configured. So, any questions, leave them in the comments, obviously down below. Would really appreciate to subscribe and a like, <laughs> and hopefully you see a lot more from me as a, as a, as I push this um, push this channel a little bit. So, thanks very much for watching. Seventy threes, everybody, and uh, enjoy.